Thank you, Dr. Gray. Um, so what I'm gonna start doing um, tonight and uh, moving forward is presenting a dashboard of uh, data that it'll expand as we move on. Um, you can sort of see some of it. It may not be the best view right now. Uh, we This is sort of the inaugural dashboard for the superintendent's update. Um, the board often has asked for different pieces of data um, and questions often come up too about strategic planning and um, how these data points fit. So this is just the first attempt of many as we refine uh, the dashboard itself. Uh, what you'll find under our first goal, so we have six goals in the district and we use UNITED, U-N-I-T-E-D, which is how the board reports out on their areas of support throughout the, the month. Uh, U is for understanding, and that's around our uh, accreditation, around our academics. <clears throat> and what I wanted to do, lots of data I couldn't put up here, just wanted to uh, put these uh, couple of data points on it because um, while community often looks at the APR, and that is really important because it tells the community how we're doing as a district, and our APR went down some last year from 70.4 to 67.4, uh, and I've talked about that in the past, and certainly that's the focus this year, and I've met with every principal around their data and looking at benchmark assessments, uh, specifically in standard one and two, uh, because those are the uh, areas that we will be um, measured on, if you will, math, ELA, uh, science and social studies, although science won't be a part of uh, the outcomes this year. I do want to turn our attention as a community to looking at the APR, getting 70 and above, 80, 90, on to 100 as the first marker. The second one I want folks to start paying attention to is the MPI. Um, the MPI is really important because that tells us whether or not our students are at basic level, at proficient level, and at advanced level. And what we know is that when students are at proficient and advanced level, then they are more ready for college level material, especially as they matriculate through school. So if you are at a 300 to 400, 300 to 399, if you will, is the basic level. Uh, 400 is the proficient, and then if you get a 500, um, then you're at the advanced level. And we want our students to be at proficient and advanced levels. Uh, and so as you look at MPIs, that's the area that I've been pushing principals to really begin focusing their uh, outcomes on, especially as we look at benchmarks. Benchmarks are between you know uh, the years, so we measure and monitor our progress. Take a look up there, MPI for ELA from the last three years, um, roughly the same. Uh, went up some 2015-16 and career 1.48 and down a bit to 285.45. What Desi looks at is uh, the three-year average, and if you look at year one and two, and then year two and three, and then you take the difference, so from 287 to 285 is about the same there. Uh, for math, um, going up slightly um, from 2014, 2014-15 to now. Um, and science, uh, pretty steady around 291, 294 was the highest we've been, uh, 0.08. Um, all of those numbers are below 300, however. And uh, when students are below 300, then that means that we're below basic. Right, and we want students to be, this is on average, it's not every student, but as a district, uh, we need to be getting our scores above 300 and 350 and, and on, uh, 400 plus. Um, certainly in government, at the um, high school level, um, that's where we are showing this, the, the strongest um, you know, outcomes uh, at a 337.65, which certainly is above 300. So we'll expand the understanding as we move forward. And the networking, uh, just some data points to look at. That graph you see uh, is a graph of the website traffic. And that's over the last year. Um, since we brought on board uh, Anya and uh, Brandon and Charlene as our marketing communication specialists, uh, they've been doing a really great job at being in their schools and their uh, areas uh, under uh, uh, the support of Mr. Hampton. And so we see a huge uptick in the amount of traffic on our website and people going into our websites, using our data, uh, accessing that information. Communication is critical. Uh, so if you look at that, you'll see where that has gone up quite a bit. Um, for for her floor, that line sort of under the graph itself, that's our traffic over the last 28 days, um, about 13,000 uh, plus posts. Uh, the school with the most uh, community engagement has been McClure. So each month we'll try to highlight the school that has um, the most engagement around their 
um, you know, uh, information on their websites, et cetera. So we encourage, uh, you know, schools to really get their folks in, involved. So I want to just highlight that McClure uh, has taken for this month. Uh, with infrastructure, you'll see, you've seen this um, before. This is our timeline. And right now, uh, you've heard already uh, Ms. Harge and others say something around our um, restructuring. And uh, you know, we've had community meetings. We continue to have those. Right now, MGT, which is the company that's doing the building assessment system, uh, they have not only been uh, meeting with uh, school people, school teams, uh, but also with the board. They met with the board. Um, and uh, as soon as testing is over, they will go in and do those physical assessments of each individual uh, school site. And again, that had been slated for uh, a week and a half ago. And because of testing, we decided to hold off on that until our students were, were done. <coughs> Uh, for talent, uh, we had about 39.9 openings. Uh, we filled about 35% of those. Uh, we still have about 25 openings. Uh, we have uh, specifically looked at um, our staffing models at every school. I know some questions have come from folks around staffing and class size. And, uh, you know, uh, let, me, let me just be really clear about staffing and class size. Um, so we have had a number of classes that have been small across the district uh, in many ways. Um, we, we've looked at staffing in every building. Um, and let me tell you that I have been very intentional uh, around the numbers of students that we have in schools, especially at the secondary level, um, and then the numbers of teachers that are assigned based on subjects, especially at the high school level. Um, I've met with uh, principals. Uh, we'll be meeting again because we have done an initial round of our staffing. Uh, we'll take a look at it again uh, as we continue to get prepared for next school year. Um, but we are always very aware of the numbers of students in classes, um, and especially at the K-2 level. Uh, let me say again, I've said this before, uh, we made a commitment to put more resources into our K-2 classes because of our sizes of our, some of our kindergarten classes that we had in the past. And we know that the research tells us clearly uh, where that makes the most difference. But we absolutely uh, won't have uh, bustling classes, uh, big classes, bustling is not a good word, overcrowded classes is a better word, um, at the high school level. Now, I know there are some places in the high schools where there may be some uh, larger numbers, especially in our physical education classes, and typically you have larger numbers of students there. Uh, but let me say that uh, I uh, personally have met with every principal. Uh, and also had assistant principals who do the scheduling uh, as well with those conversations. And, uh, you know, would love to answer any questions folks may have around the data itself. Uh, I think that, you know, and Ms. Selman, Ms. Selman mentioned this a moment ago, uh, you know, um, let me say that we're going to move as fast as we can. Uh, I, I want to say that as carefully as I can because uh, we've done contracts. Uh, we've asked folks to go ahead and sign those. We want to keep folks on board. Um, but we have to be very careful uh, at our appropriation of staff every year. Um, and I have been as intentional as I can about that, um, and I will continue to do that. Um, we will be, I will be personally meeting again with our principals, especially at the high school level, but we'll try to get folks in place as fast as possible. We're still getting, um, you know, a couple of retirements here and there. And, and so when those happen, and you have an opening or a person who hasn't been placed yet, and you have another opening that comes, for example, if it's English, and you have a person waiting to be placed and an English person retires, that's a per perfect natural uh, fit. Uh, if it doesn't happen, then we try to put people in the best places possible. Uh, but, but please, I uh, just uh, ask that you be as patient as you can. I know that sometimes it feels uncomfortable, um, but, uh, we're going to move as fast as we can uh, to get everybody in place uh, over the next, uh, you know, a little while. Um, economically, um, last couple of ones uh, I want to just highlight um, where we'll be continue, continuing to focus on our fund balance, um, focusing on our resources that we have in our district so that we can focus on putting more resources in schools and in classrooms. I will tell you that we, this year, in J January, gave uh, our secondary schools that haven't gotten this before uh, gave our secondary schools federal dollars, our Title I dollars. Um, especially our high schools and our middle schools got a big chunk of money uh, to support academic programs in, in the classroom. Uh, this year, this is the first time it's ever happened uh, because we know that our secondary schools need more support, uh, more support as well. 
And then finally, our decorum, uh, just looking at discipline and looking at uh, attendance and enrollment. Um, Dr. Thurman said it better than I could, that we are not there yet, and I absolutely acknowledge that. Uh, we're making progress, and it takes time. Uh, it doesn't happen overnight, but we have to be a team and keep pushing forward. Um, you know, what I said before, and I'll keep saying it. Uh, numbers are great, but behavior is what we want. It's better behaviors. Uh, we're going to be doing some great work in June uh, at KU uh, with the folks at, at Kansas, the University of Kansas with Dr. Kathleen Lane. Uh, we've been meeting with uh, people constantly uh, to try to give support to the school, especially around climate and culture. Uh, finally, around the quorum, we've done a lot of work with OHI, and each school has done that work as well, uh, looking specifically at OHI data, uh, looking at those surveys, so that leaders in the schools, because really the principal in the school has a, is a, is a, is a huge level uh, when it comes to improving, uh, improving day quorum. So uh, that is what I wanted to say about the um, strategic planning parts. I, I want to take this opportunity uh, to, um, you know, say how grateful I am uh, for this next part. Um, we, we've been talking about restructuring. I know there's some questions about it that are going to come next from the public. Uh, but we've been talking specifically about our early ed programs. Um, I, I personally had a meeting with um, Mr. Les Lentz uh, and Mr. Paul Schrader, uh, along with Dr. Courtney Graves, um, with uh, Laura Madrusik, Larry LaRue, Kevin Hampton, and specifically uh, talking about a, a, a sizable day donation that will be coming uh, imminently from Mr. Jim Clark. And we're very grateful because it will be a sizable donation. We're working through right now all the particulars with um, you know, his uh, attorney and our folks uh, looking specifically at what those parameters are. One of the things that Mr. Clark has said to us and what we want to make sure we're clear on, this money will go to the foundation. We have a foundation already in place. Uh, he's going to be making a donation to, to the foundation that will be specifically for early ed. Let me say that uh, one of the things I share with uh, Mr. Lentz and Mr. Schrader when I met with them about this donation is that one of the goals that the district has uh, in my evaluation, as well as the district as a whole, uh, is serving more three and four year old students in our district. We've got the data from Ed Plus and we're looking at DFS data to identify students who are born in our district. And what we want is to get our three and four year old students in our early ed programs. And we want to serve them for two years before they go into kindergarten. That is our goal. And, and, it, and our goal is to get at least half of the students that are born in our, in our uh, attendance area in our district. Uh, many of them go to other um, you know, uh, community-based organizations, and we want to get as many students as we can, because what we do know is, based on our data over the last couple of decades, that students who go through our early ed programs, uh, every time, hands down, do better than students who do not in math and, and ELA. And, and we've seen that data time and again. So I want to take this opportunity to recognize Mr. Jim Clark for the donation he's going to be giving to our district um, and just really appreciate the support because what he said is that he wants to see that expanded. And it's good to have those dollars, especially at a time of this when we are preparing for that restructuring, uh, to be able to give money and support to our early ed program. Uh, so join me in giving Mr. Clark a round of applause. <laughs> more details once we work through all the particulars uh, and we'll uh, be coming back with some updates uh, about more specifics but I wanted to take this opportunity to honor that because I really am grateful for the direction uh, that we're going in but, but I know we've got a lot of work to do um, I know that um, and I understand that uh, but one of the things that we can do if we expect to be improving and be better in five and ten years is do nothing um, and so it, it, it is difficult I know that um, I know some of the um, feelings and emotions I've gotten uh, from different communities around the restructuring parts uh, has been challenging. Um, and you know, not only do we listen, um, and I can tell you that every time somebody asks for something, we do what they want, but we listen and try to incorporate that as best as we can. Uh, so I just ask for your patience and uh, continued uh, support as we move our district forward.